All right, I think we're live now. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and grab the link and start to spread it. I'm gonna do that. So hello, everybody. Eugene and I here are uh, just gonna discuss um, what we put into our bodies. And uh, some people have the, the um, I guess the notion that it doesn't really matter since these bodies are just avatars. You can do whatever you want, put whatever you want in it. But uh, I'm not finding that working for me. I guess if you're a really good wizard or alchemist, you can do that kind of thing. But uh, most of us really need to be mindful of what we're putting in our bodies. And uh, it really is simple. We make it too complicated the way we do it now, right, Eugene? Exactly. And, and you're saying maybe some wizards uh, can, can transmute that horrible energy. But I think what a true wizard does is he doesn't even need to take part in, in any kind of a painful or damaging act. And Julia, right before we get uh, real deep into it, uh, I would like for you to give me the link because I, I can't seem to uh, find the live. So if you give okay. me that, uh, if you send me that link, I'll just send it out to uh, uh, the people. Okay. I'll send it to you in the chat. I mean, in a Facebook messenger. Oh, actually, I just got it. Never mind. There's YouTube has a whole different live tab now, which is kind of nice. All right. Going. So, yeah, and while we're doing this, if anybody has any questions, uh, I'll watch the chat too. So, uh, but Eugene's, even though he's only 22, he's really been studying what we should put in our body and i mean he gets down to the whole no hybrid kind of thing but i like what you're doing too that you don't have to stick strictly to just raw fruit either as long as you eat the uh, dr sebi approved mucus free foods right exactly and, and and you know this is the thing uh, I do think that uh, eventually, and this is why I would love to uh, come see what you're doing and, and, and take part in the fruit that, that's uh, coming out in your land, is because even though I say these things that as long as you're eating uh, alkaline electric, you're not damaging your own body, I still do think that that energy exchange with getting a seasonal fruit that's ripe and raw and eating that, there nothing beats that. Because like, if you even think about it, like time-wise, right? Nature has created that chemical structure perfectly based on the angles of the sun or based on the angles and the, and the energies in nature or the astrological, whatever you want to say, right? So it's literally the, the perfect time to be eating these fruits once they're ripe on the tree. So I, I just want to put out a disclaimer that I don't talk against raw foods. You know, I'm not saying cooked foods are better. I'm not saying any of these things. But, but yes, Julia, I think the number one thing uh, we can do to help people who are quote unquote transitioning is to tell them if you're going to transition, at least do it with a, a healthier foods or foods that will not damage the body, if that makes sense. Totally. And again, it's all about keeping your system clean and everyone needs to watch the video, The Great Lymphatic System by Dr. Robert Morris. Because that explains why all the cooked foods that we eat that are just uh, not meant to be in our bodies mess things up. And pretty much all disease comes from what we're putting in our body. Amen. Yeah. All disease, all sickness, all psychological problem, all trauma, literally, I think every family issue, every friend issue, everything, I think, boils down to food. No pun intended. <laughs> I think everything comes back to what we put in our bodies because that's the building blocks. That's step one, right? What you put in your mouth is what is going to come out of your mouth. So if you're putting things in your mouth that are conflicting with the body, what do you think you're gonna create outside the body? More conflict. So it's these kinds of things, right? And so let's get into that a little bit, uh, uh, Julia, is, you know, again, so, I think uh, if you're still doing cooked foods, if you're still doing alkaline electric foods, um, just make sure you're cycling, right? So make sure that your body is at least getting two days a week, three days a week. I, I don't want to give out methods, right? 
one day a week at least, right? Where it's getting a chance to clean, right? So, and this is the thing, if you're gonna do cooked foods, also make sure you're intermittent fasting, that you're at least starting towards the late, later periods of the day, or you're eating real early. Because again, what this intermittent fasting or eating light foods like fruit will do, mono fruiting and stuff like that will do, is give the chance for the body to facilitate, right, uh, uh, the, the, the energy that's moving slow to speed it up. And when the energy speeds up, what do we call it? A fast, right? It, it's in the lingo. It's so simple that when the body is doing little to no digestion, that is when the body is healing the most. And that's why I'm, I'm saying, Julia, that I'm so excited uh, to, to come where you're at and, and see this uh, uh, Garden of Eden, uh, uh, the, begin, the humble beginnings of a, uh, of a potentiality of a Garden of Eden, because when if we do that, and when we do that, we will create an environment where people can come and heal. Because so much of the world is distractions, Julia. Maybe we can get into that a bit. Is that there are so many distractions to take part in, whether it's food, whether it's content, whether it's this, whether it's that. And the healing really starts when there is no distraction at all. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, totally. And, you know, you can grow all the foods that are not the hybrids. And uh, like you said, you, there's a lot of things you can prepare with those. You know, there's tons of foods that you can't eat that are, you know, good for you. And it really is true that when you eat light and you you um, eat the electromagnetic food, you, you have so much energy, too. Your body has the energy to keep itself, you know, at optimal performance. But you just have so much energy. You have to find a lot to do when you start eating really clean because you have energy and you don't want to sleep. You don't need as much sleep. And uh, everyone should at least try a week you know, of eating really clean and the processed foods are the worst. And I'm still addicted to those. And I still have my days because my nephew always has them, but uh, <sighs> man, those are the worst. They're just the worst. Yes. And like you said, we're so distracted by so much, but if everything yes. is so readily, easily available and other people are always indulging in, you know, healthy, good things, and you could see how it was affecting them in positive ways, it would just carry on like that, you know? Because we can yes. see how McDonald's is affecting everyone and making them obese and processed food and all that. Well, we can flip the script and go the other way now. Yeah. And really, this goes to everything. But, you know, let's talk. Let's focus. Let's narrow it down onto the food is it's really escapism, Julia. Uh, a, a lot of the food, the, the eating habits that we see today is escapism, is avoidance. Because the thing is, when we face our hunger, simultane simultaneously, we are facing all of the traumas, all of the pains, all of the emotional body that, that's been building up. So what people are doing when they're eating too much or when they're eating the wrong thing, which is what Muhammad said is the cause of all sickness, is those two things, eating too much or eating the wrong thing. Every religious figure goes on a fast at some point or another, right? The thing that we're doing is escaping our trauma release. We're escaping detox. Now, this is literally what a detox is, is getting all of those points and those blockages and those energetic, you know, cloggages and, and really uh, breaking free from that. And so really, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, our psychological dependence depends on our sickness in the body, because I'll put it this way. Without a clean medium, you cannot think clearly, right? Without a clean body, there is no clarity in the mind. So all these people are, are thinking of concepts of clarity, are thinking of you know, great extravagant, right, ideas of salvation, ideas of this, ideas of that, right, all these spiritual concepts. But the last thing they'll do is eat clean. <laughs> That's the last thing uh, uh, they'll take part in. Is, a, is an honest and pure and clean energy exchange. And so that's what, what I think uh, we're coming to. So, so yes, Julia, so um, that's why, uh, again, I don't really believe in transition, right? I think as long as you're on the alkaline electric diet, you don't really need to transition. Again, there is space for you eating quicker foods, faster and lighter foods, rather than slow foods, like for instance, uh, chickpeas or quinoa. But the point is chickpeas, quinoa, rye, 
you know, black or, or, or wild rice, these things are formulated in nature. So if something is formulated and chemically constructed in nature, God made it, right? And I want to get away from labeling God and constantly uh, creating this image of God. But if you just think about it naturally and simply, if something comes about naturally in nature, it is good. The chemical structure is in such a way where you can take part in it. It's just a matter of time of how quick you want to detox or how slow you want to detox. So again, if you take part in something that has not been made by God, well, you're fooling yourself quite literally because it's only a matter of time before that, again, that uh, inconsistent, uh, incoherent chemical structure slowly starts to break down your body. And so I think uh, this is really at the crux of the issue, Julia. Sorry for talking for so long. But it, it is the chemical structure of the foods that we are taking part in. Right? It's literally communion. So if you're going to take part in the flesh of God, make sure that that flesh comes out of nature. And it's not real flesh, obviously. That it's the food and the fruit. And again, the flesh of the gods, which means, yeah, coconut meat, which means... Uh, burdock, which means sea moss, which means quinoa, which means alkaline electric foods, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to be putting in our body. And like you said, food is a drug, you know. Yes. Stuff that, and, and everything revolves around it in culture. You know, all you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming up in the States. And oh, my gosh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Talk about gluttony, right? And yes. everything, you know, food is love. That's how mothers show their love by giving food. Every um, celebration in life has food involved, often alcohol yes. too. It's a whole yeah. other issue, but hopefully most people here <clears throat> have given that part up, you know, the whole alcohol because it, but so, you're like, so many people just don't want to uh, change their diet. They'll do everything else spiritual. <clears throat> They'll meditate for 20 hours a day but uh they just don't want to do that and it's i get you know the the food is addictive it's a drug you know it's the most abused drug out there you know and sugar is you know you know right on top because anything processed has tons of sugar so yeah just getting all that stuff out of your body and like eugene said take at least one day a week and maybe more where you, you eat really clean and see how you feel and you'll feel totally different. But if you do it a couple of days in a row, you really get a chance to see how it feels. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's kind of like this, Julia. Know. It's kind of like this, Julia. Could you go for a week without sleep and constant labor? You know, that's a kind of example I can put is that when you're eating light foods or when you're not eating at all, it's the equivalent to sleeping or it's the equivalent to rest, right? And if you don't rest, what happens? You're restless. So literally you're living a blur of a life. You're living a half-life, right? You're, you're basically living drunk, right? Because you know they've done studies that people who are sleep deprived have the mental capacity of being drunk. Now you brought up drugs, Julia, that we're literally eating drugs in our food. Well, that's precisely it. That's what happens when you eat things that are not that you're not supposed to be eating, and when you're when you eat too much and you mix too many food groups, it's fermentation. So literally, there is being alcohol made in the body, right? There is being acid being made in the body, and people yep. think that as long as I don't eat the out there alcohol, I'm safe from all the uh, harmful drug processes that are going within the body. No. Even if you don't drink alcohol, if you're eating carrots, right? If you're eating uh, potatoes that are not the red rose potato, if you're eating all these foods, you're creating alcohol in the body, right? The body is beginning to ferment. So people forget about this aspect of it all is that, again, just because you're not consuming a drug or, or, or quote unquote drug doesn't mean uh, uh, right, that you're not consuming starches, that you're not consuming glucose, that you're not consuming, you know, all these other drugs that are slyly hidden to make us think that things are natural, but they're not. And so this is the biggest thing, Julia, I think we're going to have to really cut through is this false 
psyop of certain uh, aspects of veganism, that just because you're eating vegan does not mean you're eating foods that God created. A lot of vegans today are eating godless foods. Especially the processed food that yes. vegan. When, when I first quit eating meat, I just I was all about that processed vegan food and I wasn't healthy at all. And when I got off of that, I lost like 80 pounds. Wow. But I, last last uh, Christmas, I got off, I was pretty good, you know, before Christmas about staying mostly, you know, mucus free diet, whatever, eating the right thing. And uh, at Christmas, I ate a bunch of vegetables and some bread. Before that, I had a bunch of oranges and I literally caused myself to have a hangover. And I know exactly. like, I've had plenty, but I literally had a hangover yeah. from food only. It was crazy. Uh, so you're so right about that. It happens in not just fermentation, putrefaction too. Yes. You know, especially if you're eating animal products. But uh, Katia here in the chat was saying that she's been labeled with lupus, connective tissue disease, uh, ITP, low plat platelets, fibromyalgia, IBS, and more. And she said, where should she start? Hmm. <laughs> where should we start? No. Contact, contact Tony Will, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so we can go the fast route. <laughs> The quick route, or we can go, we can take it easy, right? But if you're sick, if you if you have a condition, for me, I bump up, I raise the bar and say fruit, right? I say, go Even out. Mono, like a great fast, and yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I say alkaline electric, but fruit on that alkaline electric list, on, on Dr. Sebi's list, just do those fruits. And if you can, mono fruit. There is nothing better for your body than mono fruiting, right? Because let's just say that you're dry fasting and you're getting dehydrated or whatever it is. What mono fruiting will allow, allow you to do is constantly hydrate the body. Because again, fruits are astringents, right? So constantly move that lymphatic system, constantly be peeing out these toxins. And again, just healing quickly in general. So, you know, if someone is sick, right? It's not time for playing around anymore, right? It's not time to be dilly-dallying. If you're sick, you need to be eating just fruit or not eating at all. And, and especially even with the water, you know, I'm still uh, very, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not completely entirely sure, right? About what's the best thing for water. I still think high pH spring water is the best, right? Even though it has quote unquote inorganic substances in it, perhaps a small trace amount of it found in nature, found naturally is okay. It's just like uranium. Uranium is not like uh, super toxic and radioactive and dangerous until mankind touches it, right? Because it's in these trace, uh, you know, small quantities and stuff. Once man concentrates the uranium, that's when it gets dangerous. So in the same sense, I think nature, you know, it's doing everything perfectly. If water is flowing down from a mountain, I have no problem with it. So just like the reason why I'm talking about water is again, fruit, water, or nothing. Those are your three options when you're sick. Uh, what do you say to that, Julia? Absolutely, yeah. If you're really sick, I always said I would, you know, go straight on a great fast and maybe put some yes. dry fast in between in there. And, you know, if you have cancer or something, I would actually add in cannabis oil, too, because there's oh. a lot of proof. And with anything, really, if, you, if you've been diagnosed with all those things, just find you somebody that has some good cannabis oil. You can get really good cannabis oil these days. Just find somebody that recommends something and uh, do that, too, you know, and get your body cleaned out and um, yeah, definitely don't go anywhere near allopathic medicine. Oh, don't do anything artificial. That's why uh, what Julia just recommended, cannabis oil, fantastic. Because what is that doing? That is supporting the endocannabinoid system. Like literally our bodies are made for cannabis, are made for hemp, you know? Like we're literally waiting, our body is waiting to get that form of nutrition. Now, the other thing you can do is, uh, I'll probably uh, give you the link of Dear Hippocrates, a telegram channel I have, is find herbs 
that go undergo iontophoresis. Now, this is what's so important, Julia, in our communities, in Garden of Eden, and all of these things, is having plants that can digest these inorganic minerals into organic form. Because what that is doing is, again, allowing every single mineral our body could possibly need to assimilate into the body. Now, this is why, again, you don't go towards allopathic, you don't go towards artificial, you stop eating these vitamins, these mineral supplements, because really the only way you can get these minerals is if the plants, if God, if Mother Earth has digested these minerals for you, right? So again, with the whole spring water thing, what I was saying is it just passes through. But if you're trying to get minerals to rebuild the body, then yeah, you want to go look at the sea moss, right? The 99 out of 102 minerals. You want to go look at some other iron flooring uh, uh, full plants like sarsaparilla or lily of the valley, reset that nervous system, right? It's different things like this. You want to be getting the herbs that are untouched by man. And I was getting a little bit into this with the, the previous video. Dr. Morse, he has success, he's great, but he still uses hybrid herbs. As far as I'm concerned, he's still using godless herbs. And that's why when I recommend uh, herbs to people, I'm not affiliated to any of them. I'm just saying, go look on the internet and look for wildcrafted this, wildcrafted that, whatever it is. And soon I really hope that uh, in places like Portugal, we will be able to taxonomically identify these herbs, these native herbs, these herbs that are untouched by man, these herbs that are quote unquote virgin, are the, are the virgin mother, right? Our magnetism itself. And even in magnetism, we have acid and alkaline, right? That's what magnetism creates. So when we get on the right side of that, and when we start participating in naturally formed alkaline foods, I'm not saying go eat baking soda, um, go eat charcoal. I'm saying go find in nature that which has been produced and is waiting for you to take part in. That's what I'm saying. And if you do that, if you eliminate two steps to healing, if you eliminate the waste coming in the body and you remineralize with iontophoresis plants, again, with native, naturally wild-crafted, wild-forming plants, it's only a matter of time before you heal. It's only a matter of time before you fix your unhealthy habits and pretend like you have a sickness. Julia, uh, please uh, uh, comment on this. I think all sickness is really us trying to keep up pretense. Right, we become uh, victims and just fall into that. But somebody in the chat keeps bringing up wheatgrass. What do you think of wheatgrass? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I've heard of that. I've heard of that uh, being talked about in, in the alkaline electric community, but I don't remember if it was good or bad. <laughs> so uh, let, let's see. I'll, I'll go on the unapproved list and, and, and see if I can find it. But yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Because yeah, again, there's just so many foods, you know? <laughs> It's absolutely hard to keep up. <laughs> yeah, there is even more now because of all the uh, genetically modified and just, you know, that's been going on a long time. Yes. And, uh, I guess there's a lot more than just what's on Dr. Sebi's list. So that's good to know. Exactly. You know, so there really is so, so a yeah. lot. To so eat. sorry, Julie, for interrupting. Sorry, real quick. Yeah, wheatgrass is on the unapproved list. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not one, uh, I'm not, see, I'm always skeptical. So even though I have this list, I'm not a, a, attached to it, right? But when I've been data mining and collecting the foods that we should not be eating, a lot of the things that, or all of the things I've collected have been on this list, right? And so I, I do know this list most likely is, is right. So yeah, wheatgrass, I would stay away from it. And uh, yeah, stick to, just stick to the foods that are on Dr. Slobby's list to make it easy on yourself. And then later, Julia, I, I wanna start doing this immediately when I get to your place. I think we should start testing foods ourselves and, and, and grinding it up in liquid form, maybe adding a little bit of seven pH uh, distilled water into it and figuring out ourselves and, and documenting it and showing it live to the people, which foods are, are, are acid from the start and which foods are not. Yeah, that'd be cool. <clears throat> yeah, start discovering things like you said. Go out and re uh, 
do the whole way that food is presented and looked at, you know, our culture's just gone way too far. And, you know, you go to the grocery store, there's hardly any food there. Yes. I don't even know what it is. Chemicals. I had a package of crackers the other day and I looked at the ingredients and they're supposed to be water crackers, right? So that should just be Mm -hmm. flour water. And Mm -hmm. it was just a whole list of ingredients, all these chemicals. I mean, probably... 20 different things in there. So what is that? It's not food. <laughs> what is that really? <laughs> it's just foreign chemical structure. <laughs> what is that? But but yeah, Julia. So yeah, I think the number one thing is don't judge yourself and don't be hard on yourself. Because this is the thing. I think, you know, it's a real double-edged sword, this whole guilt thing, right? Because if you're guilty about the foods you're eating, most likely you're going to keep eating them. It's going to become a guilty pleasure. Isn't that a funny word? Guilty pleasure. That at some point, our guilt starts to become pleasurable, right? That, you know, we're we're so, you know, we're so caught up in in, uh, judging ourselves that we actually begin to enjoy that judgment. So this is why I, I really just say, take it easy, right? Because when you take it easy, you're not going to be eating difficult foods, right? There's not going to be no reason. And so that's the other thing. Just like you said, our eating habits have are approaching, are indulging, is gluttony, is overeating, is all of these things. So really, you know, uh, we have to start. And this is the other thing. Really, we should only be eating three times uh, a week. And I'm not doing this, right? I, I'm still eating most likely every day. I'm doing shorter win- uh, windows now. And uh, I've been doing a lot of quinoa recently, but the last few days I've been doing more fruit. Eventually, we should only be eating three or four days a week, really. Because what that will do is allow us to live. Just like you said, the overeating doesn't give you more energy. It gives you less. So we don't even know what it's like to have so much energy because we're constantly eating and bringing that energy down and, bring, and becoming more depressed and, and adding on more, uh, 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 how do you say it, incoherent chemical structure, more lymphatic stagnation, more meta- metabolic weights being piled up, right? So eventually we're going to respect and honor what it is to righteously eat, which also means righteously not eat. Right, I think that's going to be a new, huge step. Right, is not only alkaline electric foods, and I'm not going to enforce this. Right, the only thing I want to really uh, stress is alkaline electric foods. But soon, the less eating, right, the giving the body the time to regenerate, right, to recuperate, to uh, 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 rebuild itself, and really to enjoy yourself. A lot of times. You're eating foods because you don't enjoy your own company, because you're bored, because you're sad, because whatever it is. So again, the food starts to become a cover-up, right? The food starts to become, again, an escapism. And so again, what what society is doing with food is just, it it, it is so horrible. You know, but no judgment. The judgment is what's going to keep you in that judgment. It's going to keep you there. So really just look and observe the habits that you're doing. And when you look and observe at them uh, or observe them, naturally, you will realize, I don't want to take part in this anymore. So this is why I'm so excited to go where you're at. Because again, it's that Garden of Eden energy exchange where I can just go up to a tree, I can just go up to a grapevine and pick off the grape and pick off the fruit, right? And eat that. And then I eat some of that. I, I don't eat much, but for the day, I'm, I'm, I have all my energy I need. That's the thing with fruit is the, the energy assimilation is almost instant, right? It's uh, uh, some fruits, just putting the sugar on your tongue, you already get the energy in your body. So it's these kinds of things. It's that You know, it's actually really easy to be healthy, but we're so addicted to have things difficult. What do you have to say to that? (laughs) Yeah, 100% about addiction when it all comes around. And um, intermittent fasting means that, you know, you 
only eat, say, eight hours a day, an eight-hour yes. window or a six-hour window. And somebody in the chat was saying that uh, wheatgrass helps, you know, helps you lose weight, increases your metabolism. Intermittent fasting will do that. And it'll heal a lot of other things, too. And then somebody was asking, what about uh, steel-cut oats? I don't think oats are a uh, part of the on the list, are they, Eugene? Probably not. Uh, you know, again, I, I can't be an encyclopedia on this list. So I really advise people to go uh, uh, look. Uh, 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 maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put the Dear Hippocrates uh, link into the, uh, 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 the chat right here. But uh, essentially, uh, again, just make it real simple for yourselves, right? The moment we're so caught up on semantics it's just more chance for disease, more chance for confusion. And that's the real thing, is really disease is confusion, right? Disease is not being clear. And, and you know, it's going to get a little gruesome when we go into this topic, Julia, but really it's about parasites. <clears throat> confusion is from a parasite, right? If we didn't have many parasites in our bodies, we wouldn't feel the need to go eat what is artificial, to eat what is unnatural, to go seek that which is complex, right? Only a parasite needs to go seek complexion. Now, this is why I'm stressing that soon we're going to be more, we're going to stress more importance and not stress at all on not eating. Because what not eating does is target the parasite. There is only one war, Julia is the war of the internal. Yes, there are external wars, but where do you think these external wars are coming from? Why do you think the military makes you eat meat so adamantly? Because this unnatural desire to kill only comes from parasites, right? That the only war that exists on this world, in this realm, is the war against the parasite within myself. That is the only war that exists. That is the only conflict that exists. That is the only element of confusion that can enter into my life. That's why Muhammad goes on a fast or a date fast with water. That's why Jesus goes on a 40-day, 40-night fast. That's why Buddha does a fast. And again, I'm not so caught up on these concepts of these great religious figures. But point being is that fasts, what are they doing? They're resetting their organism and they're keeping parasites and candida to a minimum. Because really, Julia, most people are not even acting as themselves. They're acting as a rep representative of a parasite. Right. And the, the intestinal parasites that people have are often the cause of a lot of the cravings, too, like for sugar and meat. And, um, yeah, so many people want to defend eating animals and... <laughs> It's just time that we stop, you know, if you want to say that you're empathetic, how can you eat these animals that we've know been tortured? If you want to eat meat, then you go kill your meat yourself. Exactly. You make sure the animal died humanely as possible. You do some kind exactly. of thanks to the creator, just like, you know, people used exactly. to do, you know, if you really want to eat meat, then do that. But the stuff you're buying from the grocery store and, Bonnie was just saying too that uh, we should, you know, we're lucky that we have grocery stores that some countries don't have them, but those countries yes. that don't have them might be healthier people, you know. Exactly. You know, if they're farming, you know, if they're stuck like uh, in the desert or something, they need to move. <laughs> like Sam Kennison said, don't send them money, send them boxes so they can move to where the food is. <laughs> but yeah. Exactly. So the grocery stores aren't doing us any favor. And look at this stuff that's, you know, oh my gosh, go try to read the ingredients at the grocery store. Pick pick anything up in any of them, you know? And it's just, uh, yeah, it's, that's not doing us any favors. It was better when we went to the farmer's markets and, you know, we got our food directly from the farmers. You know, you got the middleman and look at the prices we're paying for stuff too. And it's amazing how cheap meat can be. Meat yeah, can be more expensive than fruit. Yeah, it's like how's that? How can they raise this animal, feed it all this food that could have fed probably five humans for you know who knows how long, and then kill it and butcher it and put chemicals on it so it looks okay to buy, 
and yeah. supposed to be cheaper than fruit. I mean, what gives on that? It's like some kind of psyop or something. It is. It is. And again, the only thing that goes for psyops is parasites. The only thing that feeds off of confusion and from anatomically inconsistent foods, whether it's hybrid or whether it's meat, is a parasite or is candida. Are those critters and those uh, organisms that want to control you psychologically speaking? You know, there are parasites, there are like fungi parasites, cordyceps or something, something cordyceps, where literally uh, 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 it, uh, the fungi takes over uh, uh, an ant, like uh, psychologically speaking, it goes to the place where it wants to, ex uh, to uh, explode and, and spread spores with the ant. So it psychologically controls the ant to where it wants to go, right? And then the ant stops and then, it, and then the fungi basically explodes through it and, and the ant dies and that becomes a, a place where spores spread. This is what's happening with people. Okay, there are parasites that go into the brain of prey mantises and go into the water and drown themselves. Okay, this is what parasites are capable of. They're capable of literally psychological complete domination and control. So the question is, how many of our daily acts are really the parasite? Really, you know, and that's why how much of what we're eating is really just feeding parasites. We really have to ask these difficult questions. And you were talking about this, the meat thing too. Again, if you're going to eat meat, go kill it yourself. Go gut it yourself. Go skin it yourself. Go experience how difficult it is, how many tools you need because you don't have any natural tools yourself to eat this thing. How unnatural of a process it is. But no, you're just sitting on the consumer end of it. You just buy a nice pan. You got some shitty oil, right? <laughs> and you just buy this pack, like you said, that's that carbon monoxide is being put into it or whatever they do with it, right? And they put and they make it real red. And then they, and they probably put chemicals all over it to kill the parasites and the worms that are in it, right? You're just sitting on the consumer end of things and, you know, doing no work, right? But it's an artificial thing because really you're, you're putting your body into immense work. So it's these kinds of things. It's so unnatural, you know, so ungodly, so unethical, so immoral, but really, you know, uh, do what you have to do. You know, I can't really tell you what to do. That, that's my whole thing is if you're going to go eat meat, like I said, you better be uh, slaying it yourself. And I think that's what needs to happen soon is we need uh, regulation that you need to be tied in with the, with the, uh, uh, the, the cycle of your food. And that's the other thing. So we can shift that into good energy. The same goes for fruit. You know, we should really be so tied and, and, and influenced and connected with permaculture, right? We should be cultivating and helping and peeing on and pooping uh, in uh, uh, the area that our fruits that we're partaking in is growing, right? And from that uh, tangent, what we're eating and what we're excreting should be able to go back into the soil and not damage the plants. So if you're eating poisons, if you're eating starches, glucose, you know, uh, acids like coffee or whatever it is, garlic, all those acids are being recycled into the foods you're eating and you're eating those acids again, right? So Dr. Sebi goes into the fact that the organic race didn't have any toilets because their waste, you didn't have to flush it onto someone else's property right? That their waste was so alkaline, so pure, they could poop in their hands and put it back into the soil and not get any disease from pooping in their hands. Because really, their, their, uh, their excretion and their waste, or, or, or not even waste at all, it's the golden egg, right? Their waste was part and parcel with nature. So that's another thing that's such a holistic thing that people uh, completely ignore, is that our own waste needs to be clean now that we need to now think of waste as not waste at all because that's what the matrix is doing that's what this uh, uh, uh what, what do you call it? unsustainable society is doing is they're constantly creating waste that they don't know how to manage whether it's plastic whether it's this whether it's that right whether it's meat eating it's all unsustainable so what is sustainable? Again, is when I don't eat poison so I can reuse all my quote-unquote waste.
Yep, totally. Sorry, my dogs are distracting me. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. You, you said the, the area that you're in, uh, that your dogs can run free, huh, eh? Yep, but they still make me take them on walks. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. beautiful, too, because uh, that's another thing, Julia, that's completely separate from diet. Uh, and, and I guess we could go into the dog's diet, too. But really, dogs are spiritual guides, right? That this is why I want to be in a place where a dog can run free. I feel like if my spirit animal can't run free, how can I? Right? And so really, I think what dogs are doing now is displaying to us the road to what is natural. Right? Because if we follow the dog, really, where will the dog go? The dog will go or the dog wants to be in a place where we want to be. But we're so concerned with technology. We're so concerned with tight cities. We're so concerned with animal farm living that we don't even give enough living space for a dog, right? And if the dog can't be free, how do we expect us to be free? I know that's a little bit off subject, but it's just, it, it all ties in with the fruit tree, with the dog, with the goat, with the chicken, with the permaculture animals, right? They must be in an environment where you know, they can be free and they can be, you know, because all these uh, animals are coded. They're God's codes, right? They need to be in a place where their code can be reciprocated and respected. And that's also why I'm so looking forward to, again, Operation Lighthouse, creating alkaline electric, you know, free range communities everywhere. So animals and people alike don't have to live in conflict with each other constantly. What do you have to say to that? Amen, brother. <laughs> yeah, totally. And that's so funny because, um, you know, when I was trying to manifest a place to live, that was totally something I intended was to have a place where my dogs could, you know, run free and not get in trouble. And so yes. when I go on my walks every day, I never even see people. <laughs> so they can't really get in trouble and they're, you know, fine with animals. So, yeah, I'm feeding them now. So they're all going crazy. But yeah, it's probably a good time to wrap this up. I think we. Yes, I think so too. Off. I think we triggered enough people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we challenged enough people, right? And, and, and you know, real quick, as we're, as we're wrapping things up, I'll just say this: that if you feel triggered, if you feel challenged, good, right? Exactly. The challenge, the trigger, the detox is what everyone needs. Everyone needs to be pushed outside of their comfort zone because most people's comfort zone is degeneration. So if you're triggered by a message of regeneration, you know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> right. Then you might need regeneration. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the uh, uh, emotional healing too. People get triggered yes. when you bring certain aspects up. So. Yeah, that's a good sign. You know, it's time to start doing some introspection and just, uh, you know, live from your heart. What does your heart yes. tell you? You know, are you just going to um, poison this body because it's just an avatar? You know, or do you yes. want to feel this good and vibrant, you know, the time that you're here and uh, light and connected to source? You know, it's, it's everybody's choice, like Eugene said, but we're just presenting how we feel about it. and. You know, I know he was saying on his live earlier, he's not perfect and he's way more perfect than me, but, you know, we're trying to get there. We're on the right idea. I'm building these communities where that's all you have to offer. That'll make it so easy. Yes. Yeah. And I'm so sorry, Julia, but that's another thing that uh, we should quickly go over is, you know, if there's a community where other people are distracting you, it's just that much easier. You know, if, if we have people around us, that are dedicated to being healthy, meaning that naturally they, they don't eat when they don't have to eat and these kinds of things. Again, if we have a family that corroborates no hybrids and, and, uh, and healthy eating as in fasting, look, it's going to be even more easier because again, if the disciples get together, it's, it's that much easier to be reciprocating Jesus's message. And again, so that's the thing. Well, let's not make a concept of Jesus's message, but let's start to become more natural. Meaning, let's start to drop the artificial addictions, the tendencies. And really, Julia, it's kind of like this. Like you were saying, 
I think most people don't want to spend time with themselves. That's why they're so attached to a collective. Because as long as they're attached to a collective, they can observe or identify with the collective's habits, whether it's eating, eating, whether it's content consuming, whatever it is, right? So the moment we have a space where other people are respecting that we have to be able to face ourselves and live with ourselves and love ourselves and hence not be attached to the avatar, naturally we will start eating better foods, we will start living better, we will start living right because it's the attachment to the identity of the avatar that causes us to eat meat and do these uh, ungodly things. So yeah, before I say too much, I'll, I'll stop with that. <laughs> and that's so ironic because that's the whole excuse to eat meat for a lot of people is, oh, it's just an avatar, but the attachment to them is also what makes them want to eat it. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's one of those, one of those paradoxes. All right, yeah, Eugene, we, thank you catch, so much. Catch, catch 22, they say, right? Yeah, sorry. Right, yeah, totally. Yeah, thanks for your time, and um, we'll see you in less than two weeks. And really Exactly. Like How cool we'll see you there. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny, one last thing. Uh, the, re the way I got here at this house where I'm at is through somebody that I met through Charlie Freak mm. <laughs> on a chat. <laughs> and then now here you are coming here. So so it's for full circle. What goes around comes around. Eh? I love the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Penny. Penny. And she married Stuart. Stuart White. Penny. So, yeah. She, she used to be on uh, Miraculous Monday a lot with Maria. Ah. Okay. We, met on a, we met on a Charlie Freak Q&A. And uh, she was really close to me here in Portugal where I was in Spain. And the rest is history. <laughs> So, yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. And I hope you have a good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Remember to always focus on what you want and help others if you can. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.